Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is your Ports from PC Attack. Today I'm going to be discussing my experience with the new firmware of the RTAC3200, which is version 3.0.0.4.378.4980. So far, since I pretty much had the router when it was first launched, I've been through every firmware version that has been released. And um, the one modification I was waiting for was right here adjusted smart connect algorithm to improve connection experience I'm gonna go over that in more detail in just a little bit but first I want to talk to you about my testing method that I was using to actually check the stability of the smart connect and the stability of their um, bands and channels in my last video I was telling you guys that um, I was pretty much trying to test the stability of the, um, the channels, the bands, and a smart connect. The reason I do that is I start with the um, channels first. You know, I, of course, I have the 2.4, the 5 gigahertz, the 5 gigahertz, you know, each one of them. I have a device connected to each one of the channels. Over about an eight hour period, sometimes I only do six. I test each band just to see the stability of it. That's before I go into auto mode. The reason why is because auto mode would just select the channel that it's going to put you on. And if it's a bad channel, you know there's too much traffic on that channel or someone else is not using auto or maybe that maybe that channel may not be as stable. Maybe because of your area or whatever the case may be. That way I'm fully aware that if I put on auto, all the channels would be stable so I always do that test first after that I start testing the bands you know I kind of do it with that test but I give the bands its own separate test and then I check the smart connect which I had time to do it all and um, the way I test smart connect because people were coming back and saying that you know they haven't had problems with smart connect Odds is you probably noticed it, but you were unaware that it was your router that was causing the issue. If you only have one router connected to all your devices, when you lose connectivity or if it switched bands and you lose anything for like a few seconds of a time, most devices, almost all in today's, you know, if you went out and bought one today, they are set to automatically try to connect back to that network or the next available network that's in your list. So if you're on that router, let's say you have a Netgear, if that router you lose connectivity, your device is supposed to automatically connect to the Netgear next because it's next in line to connect to that device. If you're notice, if you're not noticing it, what's happening is you're going to have latency. You may have a delayed response, or however you want to quote it for yourself. You're not aware that your router is causing that problem. So, for example, if you're trying to go to a web page and it takes, you know, it's not an instant response like you used to, that could be your ISP or that could be your router. And sometimes the Smart Connect problems may, if you're gaming, you may get disconnected or you may lag or you may be killed and not know what happened to you, just for another example. But the way I do my test is I grab a few devices. In this case, I grabbed an Android phone, an iPhone. And I grabbed the um, iPad, you know, three separate devices. I kind of switched what they were connected to on the bands. One of the bands I actually connected to um, 2.4, and then I had both my 5 gigahertz bands. And then I did the test, and then I switched which band they're on when it loses connectivity between, you know, the two 5 gigahertz bands and the 2.4. What I do first is I connect each device. Let's say my second router, for example, is a Netgear, which is not, it's through my um, ISP. And that's a dual band router, a five gigahertz and a 2.4. So I connect them to that device first. And then my last connection is between, is to the RTAC3200. The reason being is the last one is connected to is always the first one that it asks for. And it's um, first one connected to is always the one that is like the backup. So if you leave your home, you come back, it will always connect to the RTAC 3200 unless there's no connection to be established. So with that test happening, 
what I do is I let it go check it every 30 minutes to every hour sometimes I may miss hours something like that I check each device to make sure that they're connected to the RTAC 3200 and uh, if it's not connected that let me know I check all three devices that lets me know which band disconnected or if I'm using smart connect it lets me know that since all of them are intertwined and it's pretty much switching you out if all of them went to my next router then I already have a clear understanding of smart connect either had a problem st with stability or the bands are dropping and that's the best way to test it sometimes when your band drops it may only drop for 10 seconds you know a lot of people don't notice a 10 second drop they consider that like a 10 second delay then your device will connect right back up to and you're good to go within 10 seconds sometimes longer depends on how it dropped and what caused the drop so that's how i test it and with my devices i'm gonna go into the description of this firmware version in my experience now with these devices i've had really good experience with this the uh smart connect algorithm adjustment that they made actually did a great they did a great job so far i'm not gonna lie i've had it hooked up to smart connect for like over over 48 hours now and i have had a disconnect you know one a day but i'm not noticing the disconnect until you know i fall asleep and then i wake up and then the first one i noticed was you know midday now it's like okay let me test it another 24 hours which i always do a 48 hour test anyways bare minimum and uh next 24 hours it was stable even throughout the time that it um went out in the midday it still was stable connection everything was switching working just the way it was supposed to and then woke up disconnected again so it was right back to my you know isp router so i was like okay so i lost connection one other time but i could live with that that's not even an issue whatsoever and um i don't have a problem with that i can live with one time disconnect my sp router disconnects more often than that and that's on the five gigahertz band if i have it on 2.4 it's really stable my five gigahertz band on my sp router disconnects all the time it's so unstable that you know it's the reason why i went out and purchased this asus router or beforehand it was the 2400 but now it's the 3200 that's the reason why i went out and purchased this but as of right now all i have is good things to say about the router if you purchase it and you're experiencing too many drops it's possible you have a bad router so i i would recommend anyone to just switch it out just in case people are curious to know this one is my third rt-ac3200 at a given time i had two of them within a 20-day time period but i went through three and i purchased three from you know i got two from amazon and one from like my um local micro center and that's the one i end up keeping so just in case people are saying you know mine is more stable if it, if everyone's smart connect was perfect or if it wasn't a big issue the first modification right here would have never been done if, if it wasn't enough complaints out there if they didn't see this as a problem they would never fix something that's not a problem why would you fix something that's not broken so just in case people want to know that in my testing method methodology and you know saying it's stable odds is it's stable enough where you're not noticing it or odds is it was just disconnecting and reconnecting within that 10, 10 second period odds is you only were having like two or three disconnects a day and you were completely unaware of it so you know it's nothing wrong with that but that's why they fixed it it was enough people complaining about it and i was on the phone with asus before and as i stated in my last response they were uh, telling me to either try out another router or wait for the next update and that should fix my problem and lo and behold it's in the next update and it pretty much fixed the problem it's not 100 percent stable but what is this is close enough i'm extremely happy with it with any new hardware you that has software like this you gotta wait a few months before they start ironing out some of the bugs that you know it's going to be experienced these products as is they're not tested that well or pretty much they may not even be tested at all for all we know and they just 
fix it. As long as the hardware work, you can fix software at a later date. And that's just the way things have been going with all types of devices, including TVs. So that's my experience with the 4980 firmware update. And just as a bonus for everyone, just gonna let you guys know, for people that's looking for SSD, this is the one I'm debating on getting. That's my third drive. The um, 850 Evil's on sale. You get one terabyte for $349.99. Yes, this drive comes with a, a five-year warranty. Just to let you guys know, that's still a great deal. The alternative, yes, with the Evil, just in case anyone wants to know, over time, you will lose performance. But at the performance rating of this, by the time you lose performance to a point of where it's really noticeable, odds is you're going to be getting another drive anyways. There may be a four or six terabyte drive out for around this price or if not less. So this will probably just be thrown in a back burner or something like that anyways. And not in the way we're going, we're pretty much going PCIe. So no big deal. And the alternative to this is the 850 Pro. As you can see the price, 528.90, 349. That's almost a $200 price gap between the two. And the one terabytes normally go for around 450 and up anyways. So this is a phenomenal deal, phenomenal price. You know, as you can see, out of uh, over 1,500 reviews, it got four and a half stars, which is still a great deal. And I'm actually thinking of purchasing this because I need to put some games on from my, um, I have an SSD and I have a um, regular Spindle hard drive, HDD. And um, I'm thinking of moving my games from the hard disk drive to the um, solid state drive to actually improve performance on certain games. Certain games actually benefit from this. So what I'm gonna do is um, in this video, I just, I'm gonna link the notes at the bottom and I, I may even link a, a, a link to the web page. You don't need it if you have the router. The update is available inside the router. Just go to um, updates and it's there. And your router is gonna have something in the upper right hand corner just flashing, letting you know that there's a firmware update ready for you. So do the update, good experience. Best router I've had so far, and this is not the only tri-band router I had. This was just the best out of the ones that I've tried. So highly recommend it. Have any questions, please leave it below in the comments. Um, if you have any concerns or anything, also leave it in the comments. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. My next video is going to be a, another review of the Titan X, of course, because I'm going into a little bit more detail about that graphic card. And in the next video, I'm going to discuss, you know, the value of it and is it worth it for everybody and who will majorly benefit from this card. So once again, thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.